pharmaceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer and nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it, InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA, so it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced, and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com, or call 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the first of only six Democrat debates. I'm David Knight. With me are Leanne McAdoo and Joe Biggs. We're commenting on the debate as it happens. I think they're going into a different phase. We've just had a, uh, a discussion in the first part of this about gun control, about foreign policy, where there's really very little difference between the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, what are they asking them here? I missed this question. Really unfair here. not to look at the entire picture. This committee has spent four and a half million dollars of taxpayer money. Oh, this is about her investigation. Oh, these are about hard choices. <laughs> hard choices. These are about hard choices. So that something like Benghazi wouldn't happen again. There were already seven <laughs> committee reports about what to do. So Thank I think you. it's pretty clear what their obvious uh, goal go, is. Go, go. But I'll be there. I'll answer their questions. Well, you know, but people I'm have sorry, gone yeah, to jail. People have been fired. Uh, emails, all kinds of consequences for them. Far less than she did with secure emails. But of course, she gets a pass. Let's not worry about all the times I've lied. And let's get down to the yeah. fact that I need to be in the White House. Let's not worry about how I skirted the law and funneled money into my slush fund. And that is that the American people this is not a hard are choice. tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> you know, quite frankly, I am too. I, I think the Republicans need to put up or shut up. We know that they're not really going to ever do anything with this. We know that this is simply about scoring cheap political points. It's not about putting her in jail when she should be put in jail or impeaching Obama or putting Eric Holder in jail. They don't ever do that. They simply hold these show hearings to try to score political points, and everybody's on to them, and it's backfiring on them at this point. Look, these two keep setting each other up, and then the other one knocks it out of the park. She wants to go for president. He's going for a high position in there. He knows he's yeah. not going to have a chance. Yeah. He's kissing butt right now. Every chance he can on Hillary right now. Yeah, thank bootlicker. you. Thank you. There we go. Oh, right. there we go. That's the beginning yeah. of 2016. <laughs> Down there the drain. <laughs> Bernie and Hillary. Wow. Which Bernie. one's the guy? Which one's the girl? That's what I don't understand. I think Bernie is more believable as a grandmother than Hillary is. Right. <laughs> Bernery Clinton. <laughs> Bernery Clinton. I know this does not play as well in this room, but I got to be honest, Governor Chafee, for the record, on the campaign trail, you've said a different thing. You said this is a huge issue standing here in front of Secretary Clinton. Are you willing to say that to her face? Absolutely. Uh, we have to repair American that to my credibility face. after we told the world that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> which he didn't. So there's an issue of American credibility out there. So any time. You better watch out because I'm going to be standing be right beside her with a shirt on one leader, day. Which the American president is. Credibility is an issue out there with the world and we have repair work to be done I think we need someone that has the best in ethical standards as our next president that's how I feel Secretary Clinton do you want to respond that's no. not her Governor, Governor, <laughs> they just eat that Governor up? I know why are they clapping for her yeah. why 
But she's wow. not responding to the fact that he wants someone ethical in the office, and it's yeah. clearly not you. Because she my gets wife, a free pass servant. because she's part of a dynasty. That's, That's right. the way it works, people. Don't you get it? The Democratic Party is, and I quote, being defined by Hillary Clinton's email scandal. You heard her answer. Do you still feel that way tonight? I believe that now that we're finally having debates, Anderson, that we don't have to be defined by the email scandal and how long what the FBI is Look asking about. Mm -hmm. Instead, we can talk about a We don't have to be defined by all my scandals. And all the issues, which is why, and I see the uh, chair of the DNC here. Look how glad. Wait till they give you that free college. See how free it is. Yeah. yeah. Free yeah. Common Core for all. It's going to be so free, you're not going to be able to afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know when they talk about all this stuff, free college. They talk about single payer systems. System. What? In that you only give away what's crap for free. Yeah. Right, Anderson, when you talk about single payer, this is the way they use the semantics and the language. Single payer means that single decision. One uh, organization, one person at the top, the president's going to get to decide what you get and what you don't get. Every time you look at the solutions that the Democrats give you, they always involve less choice, unless it's about killing children. <laughs> oh, it's Don, don't push me lim uh, lemon in Ferguson. <laughs> They say, do Black, Black Lives, Lives Matter, Matter or do Black all Lives Matter? Matter. Here we got Don Lemon and for the Lemon. reason, the reason those words matter is the African-American community knows that on any given day, some innocent person like Sandra Bland can get into a car, and then three days later, she's going to end up dead in jail. <laughs> or their kids are going to get shot. So don't fix the drug war. We don't fix the corruption. Don't fix the mass incarceration. Racism. Don't From fix the federalization of the police that's driving this. Instead, make it a racial issue. That's what they're trying to do here. That's right. the way they spend it. Yeah, you're racist. Yeah. Right. Because it's not just black people who are getting shot. It's other people who are getting, every race is getting shot with this. And if black people are concerned about this, and they should be, and they're getting hit with a as a higher percentage, wouldn't they want to make this a common problem for everybody instead of trying to pretend that it only affects black people? It doesn't. Right. It affects all of us. All no, of us are living in a place. No, state. my white privilege stops tasers <laughs> and makes bullets, you know, yeah. bounce off of me. I've seen a lot of white privileged people get hammered by the police for no reason at all, unfortunately. The lives of black lives, people of color. When I ran from yeah. there... You got something on the Twitter room? Somebody want to talk about uh, this uh, racism that they're selling everybody right now? Every well, I got this very thought-provoking tweet from Valhalla. It says, Alex, you should be blowing up the dim debate with fact-check articles about ISIS and U.S. support. Now, I'm going to call on the uh, viewers. If you're on Twitter right now, go ahead and share our articles about ISIS and Syria and this, the whole proxy war there between NATO and Russia with using the hashtag dim debate. Let's have a real debate going on, not this softball scripted uh, debate yes. that CNN's pushing on us because... The establishment, uh, you know, they built the whole idea of this uh, tyranny is built on upon a mass grave of the truth. So if we are always going to try to rely on the mainstream media to give us the facts, we're never going to get the full story. And <coughs> frankly, we're not going to get any facts at all. That's absolutely right. And as we pointed out uh, many, many times, this is something that is of our own doing. But they always like to portray this, whether it's a Democrat debate or whether it's a Republican debate. They always like to portray this as a blowback against somebody else's policies, and it's not. It's by design. We created the threat. We equipped the tr threat. We trained the people. We pour massive amounts of money to them. They are our surrogate army. We created ISIS. We created Al Qaeda. That's the lie that's inherent in all of this. Hold on. Hillary Clinton just said the President Obama is a great moral leader. I thought that was the point. On race. <laughs> On the issue of race. <laughs> on the issue of race. Very yeah. good. Yeah, there we go. Very good and at dividing the country. She was talking about mass incarceration, the big problem of it. Well, under her husband, it didn't change. The mandatory minimums that started with Reagan were continued on by her husband. That drug right. war got bigger because he was shipping them in through Mena, Arkansas. Yeah. She doesn't want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That's why they won't talk about the drug war. You're exactly right, Rob, because... They're running it, <laughs> okay? The Bushes ran the drug war. They worked with uh, Noriega uh, until he, uh, I guess, didn't give them their cut or something. Or was some people say he was blackmailing them with uh, pictures. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what they got. With the situation of African Americans. We're talking about criminal justice reform. I risked my political life raising the issue of criminal justice reform. When I ran for the Senate in Virginia in 06, I had 
Democratic Party political consultants telling me I was committing political suicide. What does he we mean led by that issue in the reform. Congress. We started a national debate on it, and it wasn't until then that the Republican Party started joining in. I also represented mandatory minimums. I don't think that's part of it. African American Marine. Getting rid of civil asset forfeiture. I don't think that is murder in Vietnam for six years. He took his life three years into this. I cleared his name after after three years. Thanks, and sir. I put the African-American <coughs> soldier on the mall. I made that recommendation and fought for it. So if you want someone who Whatever. Is, can stand up in front of you right now Thank and you. say, I have done the hard job. I have taken the risks. I am your person. Senator Sanders, let's talk about income yeah. inequality. Why? If you're going to talk about criminal justice flat, reform, why don't you talk about rich and making the government the obey our due process? And that's not just the drug war. That's all the regulatory well, agencies all, who ignore our presumption of innocence. Left office. We were losing 800 well, Hillary said we need to listen to Obama's UN agenda on policing. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. On mm -hmm. this issue. But the world's financial that's what we're going to get good and hard. World's financial markets. The global was on the of collapse. That's where we were. Are we better off Nationalized today than we were then? Police Absolutely. Force. But the truth is that for the last 40 We've years... We've got the bigger bubbles now. We're ready for more bubbles. Disappearing. <laughs> and in my view, you what got the we accent, need to Rob. do is create millions of jobs... <laughs> that was actually Bernie Sanders. Building our infrastructure, <laughs> ...raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour... Yeah, that'll solve everything. Hey, why stop at 15? I want to be really rich. Let's make it $50 an hour. Then we'll all be rich. I hate this whole <laughs> argument of raising minimum wage. What an idiot. Uh, just, uh, I see, the thing is, Republicans won't fight against it. They'll just say, no, no, don't go that high. And it's like, hey, just have the Federal Reserve print more money and we'll all be wealthy. That's the naivete of the American public, and they can get away with that time and time again. Yeah, don't make yourself rich by printing pieces of paper and giving everybody a raise. It just, everybody has to pay more for everything else. It's just that simple. We've been down this road before. Why should the government be telling us how much we can pay each other? That ought to be something that's decided voluntarily. And of course, if we didn't have a few corporations that had control, absolute control of the government in terms of regulations and everything else, establishing uh, barriers for competition, then we would have a free market. That's the, what we don't have here. We haven't tried a free market in this country for a long time. It hasn't been this bad since the 1920s. But if you look at the They're not going to bring in open borders and talk about how we've exported jobs and imported workers. All the jobs have gone to foreign workers, both legal and illegal immigrants. He just said the economy does better when you have a Democrat in the White House. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she said, it hasn't been this bad since the 1920s. I know. Yeah, yeah she's around then, right? But <laughs> we need a Democrat to screw it up even further. <coughs> but there's another piece that Senator Sanders left out tonight, but he's been excellent about underscoring that. And that is that we need to separate the casino, speculative, mega bank go. gambling casino that we have capitalism. to ensure with our money from the commercial banking, namely reinstating Glass-Steagall. Secretary Clinton mentioned my support eight years ago. And Secretary, I was proud to support you eight years ago. Oh, I wonder how many of these people voted for TARP. And that is, Anderson, a Wall Street the bailout. Crash that wiped out millions of jobs and millions of savings like for families. It seems like O'Malley and Sanders and just keep directing their yeah. to her and they're just talking today. to her and praising what she's done. Well, let's Glass understand. They won't talk about Glass-Steagall. Let's understand where the banking consolidation started. It started with her husband. It started when they approved the Bank of America and Nation's Bank merger. Larry so Summers. Large. Yeah. He did yeah. it. He was a Clintonite. That's right. It was under Clinton that they started these mega mergers. It was under Clinton that they got a few mega banks that were too big to fail. It was under Clinton that that happened. And it was under a Democrat regime, under Obama's regime, that the Attorney General said the big banks are too big to jail, essentially. We don't want to put anybody in jail. We don't want to give them too large a fines. We don't want to revoke their license to operate here in the United States because that wouldn't be in our best interest. And then he went back to work for them. Yes, oh, imagine exactly. That. They even kept his office, didn't they, Rob? They kept an office reserved for Eric Holder. He was ready to did. come back. Welcome right. back. Thanks for not doing anything. <laughs> The revolving door. Yeah. Banking. That's where the experts tell me the next potential. And it's so disgusting to see these people so who created the mega banks, who enabled all of this, Senator who Sanders voted for the TARP. Malley it's disgusting to see them uh, the grandstand over all this as the American people were robbed. 
robbed. Biggest bank robbery ever in history. If we thought they posed a risk, but I